Hi, I'm Dr. Ashwin Anantakrishnan, Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Gastroenterologist at Massachusetts General Hospital. And these are Mass General Brigham's answers on the most commonly searched questions on inflammatory bowel disease. What is inflammatory bowel disease? Inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, commonly consists of two different conditions, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. These are inflammatory conditions that affect the intestine that over time can progress and cause irreversible bowel damage. Now, inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, is not to be confused with other common, probably more common gastrointestinal conditions that you may have heard of, including IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome. The main difference between IBS and IBD is that IBS, while it causes symptoms that are similar to IBD, is not due to inflammation in the bowel and consequently does not result in permanent bowel damage, though the symptoms themselves can be very disabling. How would I know if I have inflammatory bowel disease? IBD can present with a number of symptoms, diarrhea, abdominal pain, rectal bleeding, urgency in going to the bathroom. It can sometimes present with symptoms outside your gastrointestinal tract, which include fatigue, pain and swelling in your joints. And in children, sometimes it presents very subtly with just a low blood count and failure to grow. While a number of these symptoms are common, there are some symptoms that are particularly alarming. If you're waking up at nighttime with symptoms of diarrhea or abdominal pain, or you're losing weight, or you're seeing significant amount of blood in your stools, these are called alarm symptoms, which should heighten the suspicion for IBD, suggesting that you need to get to your physician soon so that a diagnosis can be established. If I have colitis, does that mean I have ulcerative colitis? Colitis merely refers to having inflammation in the colon. It does not tell you about the cause of inflammation. And understanding the cause of inflammation is important because that will then inform how we treat it. But what is important about Crohn's colitis or ulcerative colitis is that these are conditions where the colitis, which is inflammation in the colon, is happening because of an immune reaction in the body where your immune system is targeting the lining of the colon. Early diagnosis of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis is important because if undertreated over long periods of time, it can cause irreversible bowel damage. Why did I get IBD? IBD develops because of four factors, genetics, environment, the microbiome, and the immune system. IBD is genetic but genetics is only a small fraction of the disease risk. Fewer than one in 10 people with IBD will have an immediately affected relative. It's not that there's one factor for one person. For most people who develop IBD, it's a mix of several of these factors that then leads to chronic inflammation from the time you were born and maybe even before. Antibiotics you received as a child could alter your microbiome so that your immune system is triggered in later developing IBD. It's possible that diet you consume both in childhood and in adulthood can influence your risk of IBD, sleep, stress. All these factors also play a role in both shaping the microbiome and in guiding how your immune system responds to those microbial triggers. And so they all can influence your likelihood of developing IBD in adulthood. How do we treat IBD? For patients with very mild inflammation, medications that are designed to resolve the inflammation in just the colon or the small intestine may be sufficient to treat it. For people with moderate to severe inflammation, they often need medications that act on the immune system side of things and dampen the overactive immune response that is causing damage to your intestine. There are many different types of medications that act on the immune system that target different, what we call immunologic pathways, which are different ways in which the white blood cells in your body can reach your intestine and cause inflammation. With our current understanding of the treatments we have available, treatments are effective as long as patients are on the treatment. What are the risks of treatments? Patients are often concerned about the risk of cancer with treatments, but the likelihood of damage from disease is much greater than the likelihood of side effects with medications. Is my IBD going to go away? With effective treatment, IBD can be in remission for years and indeed decades with absolutely no impact on your life. It's important to diagnose it early and to get on the right treatment for you early so that it can have as little impact on your life as possible.
don't think of it as being on a treatment for the next 20, 30, or 40 years. We know far more about treating IBD now than we did five or 10 years ago. And so it's quite possible that five or 10 years from now, our treatment options may look very different. In some settings, surgery is the best solution to the problem, ensuring early return to a normal quality of life. About 50% of people with Crohn's disease and one in 10 with ulcerative colitis will need surgery at some point in the course of the disease. How can IBD be prevented? How can I prevent my child from getting IBD? Even with an affected parent, the likelihood that the child has IBD is less than one in 10. While there haven't been any studies on prevention of IBD, there are a number of things that you can do that may reduce your risk. Avoiding smoking, ensuring a Mediterranean style diet, particularly a diet that is rich in fruits and vegetables, minimizing consumption of processed foods and additives, minimizing exposure to antibiotics, ensuring adequate sleep, reducing stress and anxiety. In addition, in children, breastfeeding during infancy has been shown to reduce risk of IBD. The emergence of IBD in new regions of the world where it was previously uncommon has given us opportunities to better understand how this changing environment can be modified to prevent these complex diseases. Studies have also shown that people who exercise regularly may be at a lower risk for developing IBD. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Anantha Krishnan, and we are Mass General Brigham.